Okay, what's going on? All right, y'all ever seen somebody walking on eggshells or sounding like they're walking on eggshells? Yeah, that's for real. That's actually what it sounds like when these people are uh, interviewing Russell Westbrook after this game against Minnesota. Now, I've I've been seeing a lot of people covering this, right? Uh, all the way from J.J. Reddick to Kendrick Perkins to now Skip and Shannon. They covered a couple hours ago. And so I went to watch this myself just to get an idea, right? Um, yeah, I was a little baffled at what the hell this guy was talking about. All right, I see why I see why they all flipping their lid, but yeah, let's check this out. Russ, the late jumper uh, that you hit in a crucial moment of the game, and you let out kind of like a nerves in the voice. Uh, what did that do for you? I mean, obviously the numbers suggest that you weren't playing your best up to that moment. And um, how, how, how does it feel for you to be able to contribute in a big moment when the rest of the game wasn't necessarily going your way? I disagree. I disagree. Why? Why do you disagree with that? What he means by the rest of the game wasn't necessarily going your way is that you weren't playing up to your best potential. We've seen how you play before. And for the game to not be going in your direction, um, it would suggest that mistakes are being made that are uncommon. But I, the scary part is even that statement might even be questionable because Russell Westbrook, from what I understand anyway, from 2014 onward, he's been averaging about four or five turnovers a game. So turnovers might actually be common to him, but that's what the guy's talking about. Um, you, dis you disagree uh, with the part of See, even he had to double check. Yo, this man had to double back and ask him, like, you disagree? You disagree with the fact that the game was not going in your direction? What do you disagree with? Nope. Okay, let's go. The game wasn't going my way. Um, my game, you know, it's fine. My, my game is not predicated on shots or if I turn the ball over. Like, Yes, it is. Yes, it is. That, that's it's, that's like in the definition. Yes, it is. Point guard offense. This is this is what they do. They get, they control the flow of offense. Maybe I'm maybe I'm dumb. Hold on. Um, let me hear me hear the rest of this. If I miss some shots. That's part of the game. I'm allowed to miss shots. I can do that. You know, he is. like any other player, I can do that. I can yes, turn the ball is. over too. I can I can do that. That's all a part of the game. Um, but when you watch the basketball game and figure out. What impact, uh, making the right plays, boxing out, rebounding, whatever that may be, um, making the right play, making the right reads. Um, that's all about being a basketball player. Um, and that shot, I mean, just a shot I, I work on every every day. Um, it didn't really do nothing for me. Uh, just that it's been there all night and I should have been taking it. Okay. Okay. On that aspect, he's right. Okay. He's absolutely 100% correct. However, now, all right. When he says he's allowed to miss shots, he's allowed to turn the ball over, all right? That's all part of um, being a basketball player. As a well-rounded player, being able to assist as a point guard, being able to rebound the ball um, as a guard, being able to, being able to make the right play, um, score the basketball when needed, drive, drive to the hoop when needed, and such, right? That's all that he's talking about. But what he's not considering is the fact that not turning the ball over as frequently. No one's saying that you cannot turn the ball over. They're saying that you shouldn't be turning the ball over as frequently. You should be careful with the basketball because you're the one controlling the flow of the game. Right? Maybe I'm crazy. Hold on. Let's just check out, check out a few things. It's understandable if you had like, you know, one, two, three, four... Once you start to get to like seven in the first or seven in the first half, yeah, you're you're pushing it now. You're pushing it to how much people will allow versus how much people will tolerate. They will allow you to make mistakes. If you start going a little crazy with those mistakes, so they may no longer just tolerate that. Do you do you know? So hold on. He's he's talking about, you know, point guard and whatnot. Yeah, maybe I'm maybe I'm just crazy. Maybe I'm dumb, All right? The backcourt player who can who directs the team's offense, dude. Your role is right there in the definition. 
What does the guard mean? Chiefly responsible for running the offense. Everything controls the team's offense. Steph Curry with the image. Ball in his hand. He's the one controlling the flow of the game. Now, between Steph and Draymond, you know, there's some back and forth with there. All right? But let's just take a look at how... Well, let's, let's see what actually happened here. Russell, 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 Russell. We got two things to take to, to talk about here today. Russell Westbrook, 33 minutes, 20 points. Not bad, pretty good. Uh, three rebounds, five assists, one steal, one block. Field goals made, seven of 16, so 43.8%. Zero of five, okay, cool. Not the best night. Now, this is where it gets a little, this is where it gets questionable, right? Nine turnovers. Nine turnovers. Wait, hold on. Nine turnovers. Nine turnovers. Let's check out the Lakers. Uh, Lakers and Timberwolves. What are their stats in total? You gotta be kidding me. No way, dude. D bro, you are not allowed to have... Yo. <sighs> you are not allowed to average or have three-fifths of the team's turnovers. They, they turned the ball over 15 times in total. And he got nine. You're not ashamed of that? You're really not ashamed of that? That's a little disturbing, man. That's disturbing. But one other stat that I actually found crazy was the fact that Minnesota, they only lost by five, but they had 23 turnovers. Now, if I'm not mistaken, because I actually saw this game, didn't see the press conference after, but I did see this game, and I thought that there was something going on with Anthony Edwards. Yo, Anthony Edwards... Yo, he was one right behind Russell Westbrook. So somebody needs to sit him down and tell him, like, look, yo, dude, when, when you're playing against the Lakers, you cannot be getting eight turnovers in the game. You can almost you can almost make the argument that his night was as bad as Russell, or maybe even a little worse. You know? I think you can make that argument there. But LeBron. Yo, LeBron turned the ball over once, and I'm pretty sure LeBron is controlling the ball as much or more than Russell. So, one of y'all is being careful. The other one's not. And to, to Skip and Shannon's point as well, right? I know Shannon... No, Skip. Skip. It's, I'm pretty sure it's Skip who likes to harp on this. You can't... Bro, you can't jump in the air if you have nowhere to go. If you have nowhere to go, don't jump in the air and then look for a pass. I mean... You wouldn't marry somebody and just hope for the best, all right? Don't jump in the air. Now, you once you jump in the air, you commit. You've committed now. That something needs to happen within the next second. You're not, you're not hovering in the air. You're not Michael. Hey, it's very difficult for people to just hover and stay in the air to make a decision, plan, plan things, have a cup of coffee while, while, they're, while he's up there, you know, pull out a cigar and start smoking. And, like, Michael could do all that while he's hovering still. Because Michael jumps, the other guy jumps after, and then the other guy starts to go down. Michael is still probably going up, right? That's just how that goes. I haven't seen another player that really does that. Maybe John Morant, right? Um, but yeah, once you jump, bro, you're committing to the play. And if you haven't made a smart decision about where the play is gonna where the play is gonna commence, then yeah, it's gonna lead to a turnover. Or you're gonna be forced to do something reckless or crazy or stupid. Alright. <sighs> but that's that's just that. So I yeah, I disagree with what he said there. I mean the definition of what your job is in, is in the title itself, right? Um the next thing that we gotta talk about, and this is this is just crazy. Um I don't know what's going on with the Nets. 
I, I, I'm, I'm not, no one's panicking, right? But I really don't know what's going on with the Nets. You're, yeah, it's a, it's a little frustrating to see. It's, it's a little frustrating to see, um, the need for Kyrie is this high. But is Kyrie really going to take all that much pressure off? I mean, he's only playing road games, so he's not playing like, you know, home games and road games at the same time, right? So he's only going to be able to play, what, 20, 21, maybe 22 games. Right? That's that's about all that's left in the season. But at one point, these guys were down as much as, as what, 20, 25 maybe, something like that. Before, you know, before they they just put in their subs and then they were able to like bring the score down to something that was reasonable, something that you could actually go home and be like, yeah, you know, we lost. But when when they're, when the main guys were out there, they were losing like crazy. And for the life of me, I can't figure out why. You can't tell me that they're still trying to figure things out. They've had some time now. On top of which, you have you have. Patty Mills, fantastically clutch, right? Uh, you have Blake Griffin, you have Lamarcus Aldridge, you have James Harden, who is arguably within the top twenty. I mean, some some people would even argue top ten of of um, in the league right now. And then you have Kevin Durant, who is arguably, and I say arguably, the best player on the planet. Now. If that's not enough to get past the Grizzlies, then I don't know. I don't know what is. I mean, these teams aren't these teams aren't just teams that you know you could just walk over, right? But you got to put teams like teams like this. The Grizzlies are a good team, very good team actually. Like I, I love watching them. Um, but when you're the Nets, you got to put these guys to bed quick like there's no reason why this should have been this close there's no reason why they should have been down as much as they were so the struggles are real if i guess we'll have to see when Kyrie comes back what this team actually looks like what the chemistry looks like how the flow of everything goes uh and just and just take it from there um yeah because the kind of night that they're having 29% uh, from three, but the Grizzlies weren't weren't that much better. I mean, they shot worse. They they scored one more three than they did. Uh, Where they killed them, though, where they absolutely just destroyed them. Was the rebounding. They killed them in rebounds. Like, take a look. Total rebounds, 33 for the Nets, 61 for the Grizzlies. So they destroyed them on the boards. That's a cause for concern. And specifically, the way I know it is a cause for concern is because this is the same thing that has happened with other teams as well. Nets are not a very good rebounding team. Right, they need somebody that can actually crash the boards, and somebody, someone that can go out there and get 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 the ball back. I really like Nick Nick Claxton. Right, I think he brings a lot of energy. However, you need someone that that can body someone else in the paint. They need a big man in the paint that's active, that's 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 strong, that's built, and I love the way Lamarcus plays. Right. Um, I love the way that he gets up and hustles and, you know, but, but, you know, you need someone to crash the boards. You cannot be letting a team get 61 rebounds on you. You're crazy. And you're only getting 33. Are you nuts? Of course you're going to lose. Listen, that's all I, that's, that, I don't know. That's all I'm going to cover for today. But with this whole Kyrie thing, I, I really hope it works out because it was stated a little earlier. The Chicago Bulls. Yo, know, they aren't they aren't going anywhere. Philadelphia is slowly just getting better. 
once they figure out this Ben Simmons thing, it might be a little scary, right? And Milwaukee, they ain't going nowhere. And the rest of the teams, they're not just getting, they're not just going to let you uh, walk all over them, you know? So let's, let's, I hope they really figure it out. You know, that's all I got for now. Um, I guess we'll have to just wait and see what, uh, what Kyrie does. And that'll be tomorrow, actually. I'm, I'm going to be watching that. And hopefully they can pull out something where it is a definitive win. There's no reason why if Kyrie is there, this, this game should even be close. They need to, they need to make a statement when he comes back. But yo, that's all I got for now, y'all. Um, take care. Easy.